Hey guys, so I'm working on a birth step pillow, um, and I think I showed y'all a mock-up of this last week or the week before, but I'm going to actually make one, um, kind of show you guys how I do it with the different colors. Uh, and so I'm doing this on a 20-inch pillow, but the amount of space that I want to cover on the pillow cover is 14 inches. And so obviously I can't cut it out like this because... Um, it is max width is 12 inches so um, I'm doing it in three different colors so I'm going to show you how I can um, place this oh, sorry I got distracted how I'm going to put this on my mat so that I can cut each of the colors use the least amount of vinyl possible and still get it lined up on my um, pillow nice and even and straight. So this video is going to be in parts and um, again we're gonna I'm kinda starting here. I'm not gonna really go over how I made it. Um, this was the original you can see with the font um, here because of that dot on the eye the top of the letters don't line up so I've stretched things and shrunk things and and kind of manipulated the font to get it to to fit on here pharmacy is a good font that um, allows you to to stretch it and manipulate it without it looking really funky and it's good for boys and girls so you could change this up and make it blue um, like blue and gray or whatever I'm putting this on a white pillowcase so I've, so I've chosen the colors that I've, that I've chosen. So what I want to do is, I'm going to kind of move this off to the side. Before I start doing anything, before I start welding letters or um, moving things around, I always take the entire thing, make a copy and paste. So you can just drag and select everything. You can Command C or Control C, depends on if you're a P, um, Mac or Windows. Mac Command C, PC is going to be Control C, and that'll copy it. Or you can right click and copy. And then you can go over here and right click and paste. Well, of course, it's going to paste it right there. No, I don't want to move stuff around. So, paste and drag. So that way no matter what I do I still have a copy of it exactly how it is. In case I mess something up, I can't back up enough I have this over here. And so we're just going to, it's a little off, not that it really matters because it's not going to cut like this. But again I want to make this entire thing 14 inches. So if you notice these little lines down here because the um, font has different heights for the different letters and numbers and things like that it's going to show you the height of what the highest and the lowest letter or number in the font would be at and that's obviously not the case so you can do that by right clicking and weld we'll get rid of that and I'm going to group those together so that they stay together come over here you can see the same thing so I'm going to right click and weld and then I'm going to group them together so they stay together. I'm actually going to take the two of those, right click and group. So our 21 inches is there and good to go. Um, you can kind of do that with all of the things of the same color so I can right click, weld, right, right click, group. Um, and we're good here. I'm just going to go ahead. You don't necessarily need to weld uh, fonts that don't overlap but uh, it's, it's not going to hurt anything to do it and again once you manipulate text you can't change it anymore I can't go back in here and change that 21 to a 19 or a 20 so that's why we have this extra copy over here because I can go over here and I can make this another number it's not I'm not going to lose my ability so always make a copy of something and then I always like to write what font I'm working with so that I don't have to remember um, but we have everything the numbers are fine they're not 
we'll see. It's throwing it off a little bit, so welding just makes it not a font anymore. All right, so we're going to select everything, and you can see my dimensions are 11.47 by 11.43. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this corner and I'm going to drag it until we're about 14 inches or so. Um, I'm going to split the difference a little bit. There we go. So now we have this the size that I want it to be for my pillow. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take each of these components, actually before we do that, um, one thing that you can do is if you go over to your page setup, that says top right icon is your page setup, turn on your print border and you can see I have my print border there. So what I'm going to do is line this up in here and file and I'm going to send this to my printer just like that and we're going to print takes just a minute select everything move it over here file print and I'm keeping it within that print border because it's only going to print what's within that gray box. And I have a laser printer so it takes a little bit to get it warmed up. And then come over here and do it again. And yes, I know I'm overlapping and I'm completely okay with that. Just nudge it a little with the keyboard. File print and then one more and if you're doing a, a design that fits within your print page obviously you don't need to break it up into pieces file and print okay takes a minute. Alright, so I'm going to turn off my print border and I'm going to come back to this. So what I want to do is these these things that are next to each other, I'm going to leave them as they are. But let's start with pink. I'm going to bring this over. And I'm going to bring this over. These two I want to keep them together and spaced exactly how they are. And bring that over. And look, we lost our comma. So let's move it down just a hair. Okay. And I'm going to group these together. And then my baby feet and come over here. So now we have everything. And so one of the things that I really like to use is weeding boxes. It just makes weeding go so much faster. And so I'm going to draw some boxes. So my default is a blue box. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make it a transparent box and make sure that my um, cut lines are, are visible so I can see where that box is. And it doesn't matter that it went off the mat, um, it's fine. I'm perfectly okay with that. So let's draw another box around the city. And again, and this just depends on your default of what your box is going to look like when you draw it. I'm going to stretch that just a tad. And another box.
another box and I'm going to show you, when I do the gray I'm going to show you another way I do this. And we need one more box for our baby feet. And so let me zoom in so you can see what this looks like on the mat. I almost always work on a 12 by 24 mat. Um, it's just habit. Um, so we can bring this in a little bit so we have less waste. Kind of nest them closer together. And you can do um, auto nesting in business edition, but I found that sometimes it's just easier to do it myself. And so you can see everything has a box. I'm not worried that that's going off the page. It's not going to cut. Um, a mat, the blade's not going to cut any further than the, the edge of the mat. And so everything's just kind of placed on here nice and neat. And then of course, select everything, right click, and flip horizontal. That way we will get our print in reverse so we can iron it onto our pillowcase. So that's the first one. And so I'm going to go ahead and do is and group all of that and move it out of the way. And we're going to do the same thing for the gray. And I'm just going to rotate this. When you rotate, if you push the shift key, it will jump it to to straight to on that X or Y axis. So I'm close. I hit the shift key and you can see it jumps. You can't see me hitting the shift key, but that's what I'm doing. Same with going this way. If you hit that shift key, it jumps, but I want to do this horizontal. Put that there. Make sure we're all on the page. And then my birth date. And I'm going to go ahead and keep those as they are. I think that it's just, it's not going to save me that much vinyl to try to nudge them together. Um, so I'm just going to leave the spacing and that'll help when I'm lining it up to put it on my, my pillowcase. And then we're going to do this here. And there's our pieces. So let me show you another way that I do my weeding um, lines is I will take the, that's the wrong one, this tool right here, um, a poly, yeah, draw a polygon. So I'm going to click on that and then I'm going to click here. And again, that shift key will keep your line sh straight. See how it's straight when I hold the shift key? If I let off the shift key, it kind of goes all over the place. But shift keeps it straight. And then you just click your mouse to drop a point. And you can edit your points um, afterwards if you need to. and then I'm going to double click and it will end the line. And again, it doesn't matter that it's going off of the cut area because the blade's not going to cut up there anyway. So if you double click it, click a point, hold down the shift key, click another point, and then I'm going to use the arrow key and I'm going to nudge those points down just so I have a little bit of clearance right there. And so then I'm going to take my line tool and I'm going to draw a line right through here. Again, holding down the shift key to keep it straight. And remember, we can move this. So we're okay with that. So what I'm going to do is move this down just a hair. Zoom in so you can see what I'm doing. And this is more than just showing you guys how to make lines for weeding. It's kind of showing you how you can use the different tools to manipulate your, your design. So click that point. I'm going to hold down the shift click key and click this. And we call these nodes or points. And I'm going to use my arrow key and press down so that we're now around that. And see how this line doesn't quite meet up right here? I'm going to click and I'm just going to nudge it down a little bit so that now we have a line that goes across. Line tool again. And I'm not super worried about making those line up perfectly. Um, sometimes I get a little obsessive about it. It doesn't matter if it overlaps 
And then one more. Can go right across here. Press that shift key to get it lined up. And bam. And we're over the G right there. So click on this. Nudge it down a little bit. And there we go. So now everything is cleared from the lines. I'm not worried about this right here. It doesn't matter. Um, but that is our weed lines for this. You could put, you can do these in between words if you're doing something really big and you've got a lot of stuff. You can draw lines in between your your letters, your design, so that it makes weeding it easier. And so that's our next group. And I'm going to group those and move them out of the way. And then you can do the same thing. I'm going to group. Well, they're already grouped, so perfect. Got my three in a row. Got two bigger guys. I'm going to move him closer. And then this one. And so you can see they're a little different sizes. I'm actually going to do these over here. And just because I'm having to cut this a square out anyway, let's take our replicate tool and I'm going to make a row of three of them. So I'm not totally wasting that vinyl that's going to be right there. And I'm going to take my box, draw my box, and again make it transparent so I can see what I'm doing. Um, and then of course I didn't do it up here right click flip horizontal the hearts probably don't matter but I'm going to do it anyway and so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this one and then I'll you know, put this one on my mat and I'll cut it and then I'll put the gray on my mat and I'll cut that one and then I'll put the hot pink one on my mat and I will cut that one and then we'll come back and I'll show you how I put all this back together on the pillowcase so that it looks like this one here. Alright, see you in a minute. Hi guys, so I am getting ready to press my pillow. We've already did our um, cut and remember I printed everything out. Um, those four sheets that I printed out. What I did was I cut the paper. Um, I don't know if you can see this. I cut the pieces of paper and lined them up. I kind of had to trim the edge. Line them up. And it's not exact. This bottom left one got off just a hair. Um, but I then took these plastic like uh, page protector type things that are open on two ends. Um, and I just slipped them over and this one took four to get it. These are reusable. Um, I've had to pack a tin and I keep reusing them over and over again. But that makes it so that nothing's going to stick to that paper because we're going to use this to line up our heat transfer vinyl onto our pillow. And this is a pillow cover from Ikea. It's called the Girly. Um, it comes in maybe six different colors. I try to get the white, gray, red, and black. I think it comes in an orange and maybe a green, but I don't, I've never bought those. I just buy red, white, gray, and black, and uh, they're like $4. It's a 20 inch by 20 inch, um, but they're real cheap, and they're good quality and I like them because the zippers at the bottom instead of across the middle of the back like some of the ones from Hobby Lobby which I do use those also but it's easy to press with that zipper at the bottom um, and then I also buy the they're called inners this goes inside the pillow and these are not they're not super fluffy they're not gonna give you a real dense thick full pillow but um, honestly if my customers want that they can pay for an upgrade because we all know that pillow forms are not cheap, um, but this does give them a complete pillow and they don't have to go get a form. And they look fine. That's, I mean, I have them in, in my living room like this, but I think these are like $3 or $2 or something. It's like $7 total for the whole set of pillows and, and inners um, for this. And so 
Uh, just be careful opening the bag so that you don't cut the pillow. Just be real careful. I'm going to knock the camera over before I do anything else. And I just kind of go ahead and open it and give it a chance. kind of fluffs up. And I do, I cut the tag off. Um, I leave the part that tells you what's there. But I cut all the rest of this off. Um, just so it's not so, so much of a tag hanging off. And you can cut the whole thing. You can leave the whole thing. You can really hear that paper under the pillowcase. But for $3, it, it does a pretty good job. And um, they have like some feather pillows that are really nice that cost a little more. Um, but I don't like them as much for the price um, that I charge for my pillows. But I'm just going to, that'll give it a chance to kind of fluff up and air out. And then the pillow cover, I'll just cut that. I'm waiting for the press to heat up, so we're going to do this while we're heating up. And a little cardboard. And so you have the pillow cover. And again, these are 20 inches. And you can see I made my pattern a little smaller. Did about 14 inches. Just because there is going to have some, some bending around the sides. And I didn't want it to be going all the way to the edge. So you can see the size of our pattern on our pillow. And so what I've done is I cut up my pieces of vinyl and what I do is I cut them up and then I stick them into a binder and this is just full of page protectors um, got them on Amazon like I got everything else and I will weed them and stick them and because I do all my designing and cutting and weeding upstairs and then uh, come downstairs to press and the press takes a little bit of time to heat up um, I will do a bunch and I'll you know just do everything upstairs and stick it in my binder and then I bring it downstairs I keep another binder by my press also I have the pink one down here and this one I keep directions for all of my products um, in my binders I forgot to close it back and so this has all of the directions for this is um, my heat transfer paper um, that I have, my sublimation paper that I have, um, all of the Caesar instructions, um, Expressions Vinyl instructions. There's some cut guide from Expressions. I don't really use that. Um, and directions that came with one of my presses, sizes different things that I printed out and then like the directions for my epoxies and things like that need to go in a in a little spot but I kind of keep everything and I just keep this here I have a cabinet and I just keep it in my drawer um, down here so that I have easy access and I don't have to remember oh shoot I'm doing Caesar glitter what, what temperature is that supposed to be at so it's all right there so what I'm gonna do to line this up is I'm going to use my handy dandy heat tape. Let me grab that. Hold on just a minute. So I have this and I keep it mounted. It's over mounted on my table next to my heat press. This kind of just slides over it and it mounts it to the table so that I can pull my tape and it's not going to go anywhere but um, I'm going to put this so you can see it so we're going to use the heat tape and it's a, it's a high temp resistant tape it's the only tape you want to use inside of your heat press um, painters tape I have that here for some other stuff that I do down in the basement um, but painter's tape, masking tape, scotch tape, washi tape, um, any of that stuff is going to leave a sticky residue on your fabric. And um, I've learned that by experience. 
So do not use that. So our press is almost heated up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my pinks. And I'm going to lay down my pinks. over my cut thing here. I'm trying to work where you can see what I'm doing. This table's not very big. But I want to get it as exact as I can. Again, always make sure when you're laying down multiple pieces of vinyl that you're not overlapping carrier sheets with vinyl. Um, so like this little flap right here, if I had put it under, it would have been under that Z and it would keep it from pressing. So we need to be very careful with that. And then my seven pounds is gonna go here. The bottom part of that's a little off. I wanna make sure I'm lining it up with the top part. So it's okay, it's off right there because my paper was off when I taped it. It shifted a little bit. Um, and so I'm going to line that up. And I'm going to see, so I've got all my pinks done, but I can, I can actually do these other ones here without overlapping because no, no colors are actually overlapping each other. So I'm going to cut off this excess here so that we don't overlap. my tailor. This is my daughter. I'm doing a doing kind of a mock-up and I'm using my daughter's info. Let's see. So nothing there is going to overlap. And because I use those little presentation envelope things over my paper, don't do this over paper because this will stick straight to the printer paper. And that would not be good. I can actually layer these hearts Cut this just right. So heart. Let me get that exact. Sounds like our heat press is heated up. I hear it cutting on and off to maintain its temperature. And you could save like these hearts and do them at the very end. If you wanted to. But because I want to make this as perfectly straight as possible when pressing, I'm going to try to get as much of this at once as I can. Let's get the birth date. So again, none of this carrier sheet around these hearts is going over where the numbers are going to go. So it's okay for me to put this right on top. And even though, you know, I had a, a lot of waste between these numbers when I was weeding, it still was easier than having to line up individual pieces. Take that off. Okay. Let's see. Looks like this is not exactly where it should be. Maybe it's because that one shifted. That bottom one that shifted. Okay, so that's good. And then we've got our little hearts. I'm going to trim this close. Be careful when you're trimming that you don't accidentally trim off the vinyl. Again, this bottom left corner is kind of off, so I'm not so worried about matching up that left one as I am the other two. So see right here, I don't know if you can see that. Let's try to get you a little closer.
if you see the carrier sheet for my hearts is overlapping the top of that that eye an inch and that's going to make if I were to put that gray on top of that it's going to stick the gray heat transfer vinyl to the carrier sheet of the pink hearts instead of the pillowcase so look I'm just gonna snip that out take your time when you do this don't try to rush that's when mistakes happen like I I had laid this out in such a way to cut it on my mat that I had very little wiggle room because I was trying to use up some smaller pieces of vinyl that I had I checked it like eight times before I sent it to cut in here or carrier sheets over the end an inch so we're going to very carefully trim that down again you could do each of these pieces separately and if this was something that wasn't such a big deal that it was absolutely perfect I would just do this in layers and again, this bottom quadrant is a little off, so I'm not going to stress too much about that. And one last piece. And so the edge of our Jacksonville is a little long. So it looks like we're good there. And I can line this one up. And so we have our heart. And this needs to go between the baby feet. I'm actually going to save that one and do it. Because it's not worth me trying to lift that up. Trim around that heart close enough. That I'm not going to get it on the overlapping. So we're going to hold off on that one. And so now what I need to do is I need to press my pillowcase and find my center point. Oh, we need the tape too, so let's do that. Going back up, going for a ride. Okay, so heat tape. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my heat tape and I'm going to tape all of these pieces together. And I'm trying not to like really push it into the gaps between it. Just making sure it sticks to those carrier sheets. And this is one of those things where as stingy as I am I don't think that you can overdo it with this tape just try to get it everywhere so that it's not nothing's gonna shift or come up or go anywhere I'll just kind of get it on everything On smaller designs that aren't this big I have the printable acetate sheets like the overhead projector sheets um, that will go through my printer and I will print my design onto that and then what I can do is I can lay the vinyl onto my item and then lay the acetate sheet over the top of it and print it from there and line it up that way and I've, I've been known to do that as well but this one being so big, this was just easier. So getting lots and lots of heat tape. And another option to do this would have been you could cut, you know, if this was, if your cutter could cut something this wide, or if it was small enough to fit through a Cameo or a Cricut, you could just cut the pink and have the gaps. And then it's just one piece to layer. Um, but that does use more, more product. And, I was really trying to do this with just some scraps that I had left over from something else. So like I said, you can't really overdo it on the tape. And so now, if you carefully, you can take your item off the backing and you will see that it's kind of all going to stay together. See that? And so we'll get we'll get into that more when we get it on here so now we're going to do our pillow and you can do this with a home iron you don't have to you don't have to have a heat press to do this bear with my camera movements again I'm sorry okay so we are working with Caesar easy weed 
So my press is at 305. And I'm going to start by just pressing out my pillowcase. I have my Teflon sheet is stuck to my top platen with uh, magnets so that I don't have to remember to use it. So first we're just going to try to iron out this pillowcase. And sometimes I'll actually hang in to iron these ahead of time just to get it nice and smooth. Again, you've got that zipper on the bottom and you want to try to not get the zipper in the press if you don't have to. This is a metal zipper, so it's not that big of a deal. Plastic zippers, you got to be more careful. Um, if the zipper had to be inside the press, say it was going across the back of the pillowcase, um, you would want a heat press pillow. And I'll work on a tutorial, maybe next week I'll make a heat press pillow for you guys. Um, so you can see how to make one from home without those are extremely expensive to buy So we're just pressing And we're pretty good and so now Thank you We're going to Lint roll lint roll everything your own hair your pet's hair your kids hair dust fibers from something else all get stuck on the fabrics you can see there's a tag in here also um and i'm gonna cut that out like if their customer really needed to know where i got something from i tell them but i don't want to advertise that my pillowcase came from ikea we're just going to cut that out. Okay, so we are pressed. Let's do another one here. And I'm going to show you my centering trick. And this works with pillowcases or towels or t-shirts. Is We want our design centered. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold my pillowcase in half. Get my corners. Okay, so now I have this half halfway mark right here. And I'm going to press. And if this was a shirt, it would be from the, I would line it up long ways, collar to, to him, waist him, and press it that way. And then I would line it up at the, where the sleeves meet the side of the shirt under the arm. I fold it that way so that the top half of the shirt folds down and press it in half the other direction. And that gives you the center of where your design should be. And again, we've got the zipper, so we're gonna hang the zipper off the side. Press and you don't have to lock down your press. My pressure's turned down right now, so it's locking pretty easy. Um, so now you see we have the center point of our pillowcase. So what we want to do is find the center point of our design. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my handy dandy trusty lip edge ruler that I've already told y'all about and I swear by this thing and I love it it's got this edge right here that you can hook onto whatever your cutting mat or your table or the edge of your paper and it just lines up perfect right there on the edge every time and I'm gonna I'm gonna flip it around because I don't want to use that edge right now but you see I've got my inch marks all the way here I've got inch marks down the side here and I'm gonna line this up the seven and we're gonna go all the way we're gonna go back down we're going on a trip again y'all are gonna get seasick with me moving this camera around I'm sorry so we are 14 inches to the edge of that toe to here so seven inches is my halfway point so I'm just going to kind of put a mark right here at seven inches right there. It happened to land on the heat tape, but it doesn't matter if it's heat tape or app tape. And so we should also be seven inches this way or 14 total. Yep. Perfect. And so we're going to be seven inches here. So this right here is my center point. 
okay so we're going to do our best and another thing you can do because of the lines is line up your edges and do let's see there's a seven right there you'll see what I'm doing and you know measure once measure twice measure three times press once I use this for lining up stuff all the time on on shirts or pillows or whatever so this one's falling a little bit tape it there do it on this side and I'll try to do another video one day of me doing this lining up a shirt next time I have one that I'm using it on I'll break out the camera seven inches is falling right here and then one more down here so right here okay so now we can get our, our design perfectly centered okay so be careful pulling it up because you don't want to knock anything loose So there we have it. Ta -da. So we're going to go back over here to the press. Back up. And we're going to take a ride back up. Here we go. Hold on. Hope you're not eating while you're watching this. Alright. So, because we're all clear here, it's going to be really easy to see through. And you can line this up. One of the things I love about this, this tape is you can line your stuff up off of the mat. So if this was extremely hot and my hands couldn't stand it or my smaller press, you can take this over. I could take this whole thing over to the table over here, lay it out, and then tape it down um, to the actual fabric. And then that's what I did. Remember that if you, I don't know if y'all remember when I did the, um, the, uh, what's the word I'm trying to think of? Tablecloth. The giant tablecloth with the, with the four foot long logo on it. Um, I did that with the heat tape. Okay. So, looks like we're all good here. A lot of people ask, do you bump your knuckles on a clamshell? And I'll tell you, I have a clamshell. I also have a, have a swing away. Right now it's converted into a hat press. You can see it over here. Um, but I want you to see something. And yeah, I do have a bigger press, but the gap's the same. Look at the, I mean, look at the size of this gap. Hold on. It's going to vary based on the size of your press. I have a large press. I have a 16 by 24. But that's 11 inches here. Um, this is a five inch wide ruler. It goes five inches all the way back to here. Um, so the only times I've ever bumped my knuckles or anything in the press has been when I've had my hands back here and trying to get like the hoodie of a sweatshirt tucked back behind the platen so that I can close it. I've tipped it. But that's one of the nice things about, see this, this hang down? on my Teflon sheet, my hand hits that before it hits the platen. And it's uh, it's kind of like a, a warning. You're about to hit the hot thing. And so that helps. With everything lined up. And so we, again, are using Caesar Easy Weed. And we're going to do a three second press. You want to join my class? Um, no, no, you're fine. So we did a three second press and now we're going to pull off the carrier. Nope, we're going to press this one a little longer. Oh, it's 
just my pressure. My pressure is turned down. There we go. And just pull it up. See how the tape comes right off. And then we have the Lone Heart that goes here. And again, I'm just going to tack it down. Pull that up. Nope, it's not doing it. There we go. Pull that up. Off. And then finish our press. What are you working on? On the stone that will actually cut that knife on that blade. Oh. Just curious. So there we go. Just two presses. And next we're going to stuff it and I'll let you know how it looks. Hello. I'm going to zippers at the bottom. And you can see how if we'd carried it to the sides that you would have lost some of your design there on the side. And especially if you use a uh, thicker insert it's going to have even more bend on the side, which I want to allow for that. And, uh, I mean, that's it. It's pretty easy. Um, do my little mock-up. I can take pictures of it, and hopefully I can sell a few of these. That's my plan. You can see. I could probably press it a little longer, but I can see the fabric. I don't think you can... I don't think I can get close enough, but we are pressed, it's washable, and it's good to go.